Hello and welcome back to another episode of Saving Your Disaster Campaign with Saigon. Today we're going to continue this uh, campaign which I titled It's Already Lost. To get a little refresher, we even needed uh, to uh, buy ourselves some time to stay in the campaign, but we're far over. Um, or we're far away from being over the hill. <clears throat> Today we're going to go into Operation Crimson Dawn, which is a haven assault. So that's the retaliation from the aliens. And the reason why I didn't really block that or delay it is it is an option for us to get some extra XP and essentially also some more um, supplies. As when you're winning those, the supplies per region will go up. Overall, we're currently making uh, contact here in North America. We got quite a bit of Alarium and Alloys, that's okay. And we even got Intel, we got uh, one alien facility ready for us, uh, removed Avatar Project to almost yeah, half of it. So there are a couple of safety nets, uh, but the campaign so far is not over the hill, like I said. I want to potentially upgrade the weapons a bit more and give uh, the creator really a team that he can work with. Let me come up with the right team for this. I think I've already pre-selected the right one. Let's just double check. Uh, Captain, Sergeant, Major, Captain. So yeah, all of uh, those guys need further XP and it's a nicely diversified team. The Standard 4 plus the Spark and our Bladestorm Templar, who's hopefully carrying the run. The equipment also looks okay. That's pretty much the team from the last mission, so might as well just jump into it. I could have exchanged uh, the plasma rifle for uh, one from the DLC. Yeah, but I'm not going to uh, do that now. It's not, it's not going to make that much of a difference. But for the next time, I could have exchanged that. And here we go. <clears throat> Let's jump right into the mission. Oh, look at that. We got our ranger uh, that is still misspecked, but she does have concealment, which is potentially more than we could have asked for. Those canisters here, those crates, are incredibly dangerous to work with because they can explode, so you never should put more than one operative behind them. <coughs> and likewise, we gotta be careful. Moving over here opens us for a flank, but this here is low ground, so very low likelihood that there is someone immediately standing here. Potentially someone down here, so gotta, still gotta be careful. And there is likely someone over there. If I move here, there is a chance that we're going to be spotted out, but such is life. Nothing out. is without risks. Okay, cool. That looks like a good idea. Uh, we're going to put the Long range movement. spark right on top of it. Moving on target location. And let's move in with the rest of the Moving team. Out. Double movement. And if we were to grapple... Oh, that's dangerous. I have not explored over here. So might as well for now... Take the safer route, position ourselves here, that should not trigger anyone, and the Templar, of course, can stand right in front of the door. I am purposefully not moving into that spot, as I don't want to trigger anything. Chrysalids, the bane of our existence. And look at them. Immediately, they are triggering, moving in. Double Archon plus Spectre. Well, the fight has just become a little bit more interesting. Okay, resistance operatives. For once are taking the right targets. Gotta make sure that the chrysalids are dying, elsewise this here is going to be a slaughterhouse in no time. Okay, good. Well, 
That's going to be an interesting start, right? Well, let's take care of the chrysalids first. We're still retaining the high ground. One, two targets available. Oh, that is a perfect time for an overdrive. And it's time to fully move in. Luckily, we have upgraded his weapons. And let's go with... Wait a second. So if we were to get up here, yeah, that would be high ground, but not a particularly good high ground. Let's continue for now with killing the chrysalids. No detected. Staying true to the original idea, which was get rid of the chrysalids. Next up, let's open the door. You can clearly see those guys. What are we going to do? We're still hidden with the ranger. Could move all the way up to here. But who's taking care of the chrysalid then? Potentially the Templar. Let's do the risky moves first. Risky moves in this case, dealing with the chrysalid. Uh, it's not an automatic kill. I don't like the uh, chances of that. Move up. It's not a perfect position either. This here would be a decent position. But we don't have death from above. It's not a perfect position. I don't I don't feel comfortable without cover over here. What we could do, though, is we could grapple over here and then jump down and move over here into even further cover. Good. So far, so good. We got a couple of freebies here. Number one. <clears throat> making sure that this guy dies. Number two. Moving into an actual decent position. I should give sight over here. Yep, that's what I was looking for. There we go. That's some crowd control. And we theoretically have an option to finish. If we were to go down that route, the Templar would even be in a position to kill and move on. Tempting. We could get some free focus. Alright, let's do the other actions first. Could move all the way up to here. Could move all the way up to here. That would give us. Uh, that would give us Bladestorm and make us the natural target for the Shadow Melt. I don't want to use uh, the Throwing Eggs yet. I don't see a reason to immediately do that all, uh, because we have that side well under control. We got Bladestorm, we got Implaceable. If this guy here was to theoretically move in, 100% chance to hit, but not necessarily 100% chance to kill. Yeah, I think run gun is the right uh, play. Good to go. And Good to go. it's okay that we're being spotted out. I'm just taking the moves now. 
so that eventually if someone else uh, adds and we're adding another pack that we're not being caught completely off guard okay cool we did not get focus but it is what it is This should be a really nice hit. Fortunately, not a crit. Alright, time for teamwork. That is what was planned from the get-go. And we're... Yeah, that, is, that would be a great shot, but unfortunately a bit too aggressive. Instead... Let's hit both of these guys. Fifty percent chance, still not good enough. We can use the chain shot, but we need to be in a better position in order to do that. This is eventually exploding some of the gas station. There we go good one now we have the chance to deal with either of them and now is where the free pistol shot will come in handy Because now we're looking at a dead Archon. Fantastic. That is implaceable, but not untouchable. I think our position is fine. No need to get anywhere closer. Gotta be careful here to not open ourselves up for, for Shadow Melt play from his side. So I'll I'll be careful back here. Guardian, untouchable, covering fire. Do we have a... Um, it's, by the way, a fantastic set of skills. We do not have threat assessment, unfortunately. Elsewise, I would have not moved him, her. So yeah, extra movement, not necessary, and we're in a solid position. We're potentially getting Shadowbound. The Bladestone is going to kill this guy. And that's fine. Interesting. He rather prefers to kill someone than to deal with us. So the reason why I did not move the specialist in, the specialist can counter Shadowbound, uh, so I figured that that would be the logical play, not to uh, go all in. Had I known that they were just after the civilians, I would have probably played it differently. Alright. The resistance order <clears throat> does what the resistance order typically does, which is not much. We're moving up for another high ground position. Priming that elite specter here. And I would think that this here is the right move. Got blue screen rounds on Emma. So, that is a solid kill. Good, let's... Wait a second, what's our chance? 83% is good enough. Do we have an autoloader? No, we don't. So, what we're going to do is action efficient reload, because we need to hustle to the next position soon and as i mentioned oftentimes you definitely want to make sure that you always uh, 
and look at your ammunition. Such an important thing to do. Setting the Chosen up for a kill and we gotta get some extra focus. Oh, that's two focus for the price of one. The resistance team is in and the we just rescued our first few pilots. people. There's a large group of civilians pinned down within range but of the larger group of Sensors civilians is still up ahead, which is why we need to move. Can take this one as half cover, and uh, Advent is usually not clever enough to destroy it. Moving all the way over there, fast sprint. And now it's a matter of really getting there fast enough. As the en enemies will now start to move in. A couple of berserkers, okay. As long as we don't face additional chrysalids, I'm okay. Mutants, alright. Okay, so eventually, what are we going to do? I think we're going to use our sort of conceal and stealth mechanic and are rushing up. See, now it is important to effectively have the ammunition back, which is why we initially reloaded. Now it matters. Can't really get on high ground here, but we could take some high ground over there, so our sniper is going to move as well. Spark is moving, going with a nice little fire line here. That's risky. Could be someone over here, and you never want to end the last move fully in the open. Instead, let's move Overwatch. I will sense any disturbance. Okay, now the enemy should be starting to move in. Yep, you can see they are indeed moving in. They're focusing on the Berserk and with six points of damage, they now got him into an enraged mode. Yep, the enemy is definitely moving in, and it seems like a second Spectre on the side. Interesting combination, two Spectres. Does that mean there is a Gatekeeper with them? Not sure. That guy, however, they focused nicely, and all of them hit. Which is a seldom picture for them nowadays. All right, moving up. Perfect. On the move. Yeah, got to be careful. I see the Stay here for now. Deep six moving over there. Sniper could move in. I much rather would like to position the sniper here, that way it can grab over there and there. It's almost setting it up for next turn and reload, just like I mentioned, because soon overdrive will be ready. Gotta be careful. There we go, that's the trigger. And it is not a gatekeeper, but a berserker plus two specters. Okay. The other flank. Berserker plus two codices. Interesting.
Well, and that Berserker clearly had enough from being focused. They should have listened to my advice and actually kept the ammunition going. Instead, they were moving now and everybody's reloading. Yeah, what the fuck? Disappointing turn. Although you can't really be too disappointed about them because kind of the baseline for their actions is already relatively low. No one is surprised about a story where these guys are messing it up, right? I that has not happened. Can take the high ground over here. Let's start with the sniper. That actually would be a nice position. Alright, sniper moves over. And starts to trigger the rest of the gang. Fantastic. Okay. Good, good, good. We could use <laughs> plasma grenade, a genocide plasma grenade. But on a more serious note, I think what we could do is we could try to get this guy down let's clear this flank first all right we got blue screen rounds if I'm not mistaken 70% chance to kill the guy. Blue screen rounds? Yeah, we got blue screen rounds. Okay, good. So I'll be risking this here. Throwing axe. To burning. That's good, that's good. Get him fired up. Into Elite Spectre. Straight up into the face. 17 points of damage. Hunter Instinct. Everything needs to die. Can theoretically move up here. Still have a blade storm attack. We're not untouchable yet. The reason why I wanted to do that in the first place is it frees up this nifty move. I'm going. Which then allows us to deal with the main threat over here. And that is a kill and a lot of damage for just one action. Those guys just fell onto one another. Now, death from above comes in handy when you can actually finish most of those guys. Rolling. All right, so can't finish. 8 to 10, 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, okay. That's definitely a kill, 2, 4, 5, yep. So let's try to, uh, to abuse our death from above. 
Fantastic. We do not have face off. Still moving far enough away from everyone else. If we were to take a rocket launcher. It would only kill two, not three. Just out of range, that is unfortunate. those two jokesters here and we got a mimic beacon which we potentially will need to use okay so in terms of starting to hit those guys here a bit harder let's try to clean up the battlefield as much as we can firstly Got to take the risk. Uh, this here is a 66% chance plus the crit. Yeah, if it wouldn't have happened, it wouldn't have been the end of the world. But still, it was a bit of a risk. At the same time, we're going to soften up the Berserker, which will not die. So no need to press it. We could, however, charge in and get him close enough so that he actually could die. I think that is the right play. All right. Come on, Psychic. All right, he's disoriented, which is good. We can move over here with momentum. Another hit with death from above. There is the extra focus. Perfect. Moving over here. Um, now, what I mentioned beforehand. That codex needs to die. And that's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen. Hmm. Sixty-six percent chance to definitely kill it. I much rather will use concealment, shadowfall in this case. That means the sniper is no longer available target. And we reduce the number of enemies to three. Still got the Mimic Beacon. And... Oh, this is, I suppose, what we should use. Mimic Beacon it is. Overall, a decent turn. It also brings out the Paces ones, which eventually would be standing there. That was not even a surprise. Berserker attacks whatever Berserker wants, but the other two will go for the beacon. That means no stupid psionic bomb. Oh, he couldn't see the mimic beacon. That is interesting.
should have potentially put it upstairs. Should have potentially put it upstairs. Okay, the resistance operatives are doing a decent job here. We have many of them left over. This is a reload. Oh no, she still has ammunition. Okay, cool. Fantastic. Okay, very good. So, tiny bit of damage, but happens. Happens to the best of us. First things first, we gotta destroy this codex. Secondly, time to get a bit of a revenge. There you go. Thirdly, time to deal with the Berserk. Whatever you say. There we go. Dry. Might as well give her the kill. Not too shabby. All right, so that was not a flawless, but an excellent mission. We rescued 15 civilians, which is not too shabby, all things considered. So that'll be a nice little improvement of his economy. Fantastic. We got ourselves a promotion and we're going to get a quick draw. For those of you who are wondering why, you've seen the situation multiple times where she could have uh, used the pistol in order to clean up and quick draw is just a fantastic ability death from buff isn't bad either but quick draw takes the cake every single day of the week you and your crew have dealt another 45 supplies and oh, is great training center i think we potentially need to give her a bit of extra training death from above is good so let's give her that like I said, you don't need to go mutually exclusive. Potentially long watch is the better cho uh, choice compared to return fire. Not only potentially it is the better choice, but the rest is okay with her. As for the ranger, she needs blade master, but we, she doesn't have enough points left over. Salvo, by the way, also fantastic skill for her. And Serial, also a fantastic skill. So the Ranger has potential, you just need to skill her the right way. Intel, which is good, but we can get it in a different form. Usually it's more efficient to scan for Intel at the Reaper's headquarter, specifically because you don't need to invest seven days in order to do that. Good, we got 75 extra supplies. We almost got double agent as well. And I am wondering how much does it cost to build 100 supplies. Okay, well, that's, we could afford that. Question is, do we rather want to go for tactical analysis, which is the better, uh, arguably the better choice? And the answer is yes. So we're going to sell something and are then trying to expand even further. We don't have the intel yet, but that doesn't mean we can't get it. Archon corpses, off you go. That's 28, that's good enough. I don't want to sell the other corpses yet. I don't immediately need anything. Instead, let's install the radio delay uh, relay down there for even more income. And then we're eventually getting tactical analysis, which is such a massive trait. It's a fantastic continent bonus slash resistance order. Good. Let's take a look at our facility. 
I think overall speaking we can free up another seat here yep that's good and really what you're missing now buddy is the psylabs and potentially another resistance comms so for now let's put someone in here we eventually will have to upgrade it but that's going to be fine put another engineer here we have plenty of them left over put another engineer here so that there is enough power which means the game will not give us power rewards because it realizes that we have enough and really shadow lab is the next one but it is comparably low on the importance because first of all armor and weapon upgrades absolutely have a priority besides when we're looking at this here maybe another experimental heavy ar armor no experimental heavy weapon would be the right thing equipping the spark very good shredder gun isn't bad but uh, we can do better and bradford's most popular line in the entire game Shortly before we finally reduced the avatar progress. Fantastic. So what are we going to do? We don't need engineers. We're, the scientist is okay. Put 10 dodge. That is fantastic. This wouldn't here wouldn't be bad. An additional upgrade for all cannons. Yeah. Well, it would help the spark as well so it's not bad intel is something that we could use but to be honest i think we might want to go for the hunter and the skirmisher the breakthrough research here is good question is is it worth it on the other hand it's just six days and we can put some no names into uh, into this year I mean why not let's get that upgrade And then afterwards we're improving and uh, getting the warlock wonderful that leads us to the next potential mission we don't need an engineer so this is not going to happen supplies could happen and a scientist the dark events are really aren't mattering that much mainly because he's not playing with permanent dark events as far as i'm aware so 200 supplies might be the right call here psionic storm and the others have no side trips so yeah we're potentially going to go into this one here operation fallen uh paramour and we'll get the supplies that's it Guys, if you enjoyed what you have seen, if you like XCOM 2 and if you want to support the channel, feel free to leave a comment and a like down below. That helps the YouTube algorithm as always. Plus, it is enjoyable to interact with you. Take care and see you in two days. Bye bye.